Hallelujah. Last week, I received the bad news. One of my, my friends, a person we, I lived, he was my neighbor in, in Montreal when I was living in Montreal. This person, um, he's young. He got married last year. He has a child, and his wife has as, as well two kids. They decided to, they were living in, in, in Canada. They decided to move back to Africa. So they sold everything. They said bye-bye to everyone. You know what? We're going to relocate somewhere else. Fine. On the way to the country where they were going, you know you don't have those direct flights. Sometimes they stop somewhere. So they stopped somewhere. There, he got sick. During the few hours where you wait for the, the other uh, plane just to, to bring you where you're going, he got sick. And he died. He got married last year. Hallelujah. This is a person who has said goodbye to everyone. Um, I'm going to try life somewhere else. And then he does not even get where he was going. Brothers and sisters, we take things for granted. When you see yourself in the mirror, don't think that you are the person you, you yourself made. You did not. God is behind every, everything. This brother, who was young, strong, good-looking, freshly married, did not even have time to enjoy anything. God says, it's done for you. It could have been you, it could have been you, it could have been another person. Hallelujah. When we're talking about faithfulness, when we're thanking God for everything he has done, we have a lot of thinking to do. And then what comes to my mind is thank you, God, for everything you have done, and thank you for all the other things you're going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the main reason I'm reminding you all of this is because we complain. We complain too much. We complain for every little tiny thing. We complain. It's like God has to stop everything he's doing and then focus on you because you are now having what you're looking for. You are here today, you are 20 years old, 30, 40 maybe more. If you look back, you will notice that some of your friends you grew up together are not even, they are dead. Some of them, they are dead. Some of them, it did not turn well. Some of them, as we're talking, are sick, maybe in hospitals. Some have no home, no jobs. They live outside. But you are not. You are here. You are praising the Lord. You, people around you are saying, brother, you really look good. Brothers and sisters, some people like you are homeless. They even have no home. Sometimes you have to stop and say, thank you, Lord. Yes. I probably don't have a BMW, but my Ford is able to bring me to church is able to bring me to work. Yeah. Hallelujah. As a church, as I said, it has been 13 years that we have this ministry. We started in 2005. God has been with us step by step. Through a moment of joy and through a moment of difficulties, God has been here. Hallelujah. When this ministry started back then, we were maybe 60 people in total, maybe a little more. Our church was small, clean, beautiful, but small. Hallelujah. And God started bringing people. The church was maybe 90% white. God said, I did not create only white people. I created other people too. And then Spanish came, and then black folks came, and then everyone else came. Hallelujah. Amen. It has been, what, 13 years. In 13 years, 
God trusted Apostle and, and all, all of you as well to go from one church to 20 churches. And he's adding evangelists for the international ministries. Hallelujah. I just want to say this morning, it is not by might. It is not by power. It is not. It is only by the Spirit of the Lord. There is no way we could have accomplished what we accomplished in 13 years if it was not God behind us. Hallelujah. God kept the church together. We all know how it goes. After two or three years, you have some who leave. They leave off half of the congregation, and then whatever. But let's be serious. Our church is a church where almost every single year, we ask some people to go. They do not live by themselves. We ask them to go. You go in the south and open a church. We're getting crowded here. And then you go here, you do that. Brothers and sisters, it did not take two, three years for the church of 60 people at that time to be full to the point where we had two services, one after another. And then we said, maybe we should buy a new church, a bigger church. That's why we are here in this facility. Hallelujah. God as well kept our families together. God kept our families together. Uh, can I hear an hallelujah? Did God, God kept your families together? A lot of people are not together anymore. Hallelujah. God gave us a clear vision and he helped us to fulfill that vision. Here at Cross Point Fellowship, we believe and we proclaim that every, every believer is a... Oh, come on, brothers and sisters. Every believer is a minister. And every minister is a leader. Every leader, a reproducer. And every reproducer... You heard the testimony of a reproducer. What do you think the reproducer was doing? Changing the world. That's a very clear mission that God gave us. Hallelujah. And the more important thing, he is behind us, and he is behind the vision he gave us to fulfill it. Hallelujah. It is not by might, not by force. Hallelujah. You cannot go in 13 years from one church to 20 churches just by force. It is impossible to go from 60 members Two thousand members. No, it is not by might. Hallelujah. You cannot go from one pastor to 30 plus pastors and evangelists. Hallelujah. Oh, let me say that God is in our midst. God is with us. God is for us. So we will succeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has been faithful during this entire time. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not take credit for anything that has happened. Right. Do not. I can guarantee you that many people wanted to have many churches, but they did not. They even had a hard time to keep one church that they had. It did not happen because we we're very talented. No. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I have been ministering to a person from a different faith. For some reason, people come to me and say, pray for me. Uh, sometimes I, I know why, but sometimes I say, okay, oh, fine. But this person is from a different faith. So it's complicated to pray for a person from a different faith. Yeah. <laughs> because as soon as I open my mouth, I say, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So I've been doing the best I can uh, saying that Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, Jesus is life. So I have been ministering to this person. If the person came to me, it's God who sent the person to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And the person has questions, why? Why, 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 why? Why am I sick? Why this and why that? Why God allows all of this? If really God likes us, why, why, why? 
Why? The problem we have here is that when we have problems, doubt kicks in. You know, this person does not know Jesus yet. Hallelujah. Please pray for it because it's coming. I, I know. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know. But the, the world we live in is a world that God does not exist. When you pray, when you spend this much time going to church, this world we live in, people will tell you, God does not exist. You're wasting your time. The philosophy is simple. You have to try hard. And the harder you try, that's the best chances for you to succeed. If you try hard enough, you will succeed. That is the word the world we live in. And that is what people teach us. So it becomes difficult for you to say otherwise, to talk about Jesus. But I know that the world will never tell me to pray, will never tell me to trust in God, because they do not. But I know where my force is coming from. I know where my health is coming from. I know everything. It is not coming because I'm a good-looking guy, very strong, who has a lot of money, who is very intelligent, I can provide by my, to myself anytime I want. I know there is God behind everything. If God opens, it, it opens, and I can go. Other people don't know. Our responsibility is to bring the message to them, and they have to choose. They will have those questions, why, 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 why? Do not be distracted by that. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when they are telling you, why I'm not the boss here, and then you look at yourself and say, oh, me too. But you know what? Let's trust God. Right. For me, that is a distraction, and I refuse to be distracted. I will stay focused. Hallelujah. Amen. If your friend studied hard and became, I don't know who, good for them. Fantastic. If they believe by their own strength they were able to build what they have, fantastic. We applaud for them, hallelujah. But my Bible says it is not by power. It is not by might. It is by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not saying you should not work. I am not saying you should just stay idle doing nothing until someone feeds you. No. That is not what I'm saying that is not what God is saying. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to do what? To work and take care of it. So us, we have to work. And God will provide for us. I know that everything you have, it's not because you worked for Everything I have, it's not because I worked for. There is the grace of God behind me. I, I know. I know. The second book of the Thessalonians, Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 10 says, Whoever doesn't want to work shouldn't be allowed to eat. Brothers and sisters, this is God talking. So if your friend says, you, if you work very hard, you will succeed. Guess what? God is saying you have to work, and if you don't work, you are not allowed to eat. So it's not something that the world came up with. It's the first instruction from God. Yeah. I have created everything, but you got to work. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But you can work as much as you, if you want. If God's grace is not behind you, there will be little result. Hallelujah. Coming back to my friend's story with the questions, where is God? Hallelujah. Why I am not, I don't see any signs in front of me of success. Where is God when I fell? Hallelujah. I know some of you have asked themselves those questions. You have done everything in God's way. 
You have followed all the principles, but nothing you have been praying for is happening. And some of us here, I know they are frustrated. Some got discouraged, and even some backslid just because the results were not there. They prayed for miracles. They never seen any miracle. Hallelujah. I have to admit, it's difficult to minister to people like that. It is becoming very difficult to teach about Jesus when people are looking at themselves and they envy other people, especially our youngest the school, the word, and social media is teaching them to see and to seek things a certain way. When you ask them to pray, they, for them it becomes like a waste of time. Am I talking to parents here? Yes. Hallelujah. The question is always, what is the point? What is the point doing God's way? What is the point living right? What is the point being obedient? What is the point of being here on Sunday? What is the point of going to bed early on Saturday so that I can make it to church on time? What is the point? What is the point of tithing? What is the point of giving a donation? What is the point? What is the point of praying, forgiving? If in the end I will struggle, if I'm struggling, why? The answer is simple. The answer is what the Bible says. If you hold on God's way, if you walk in God's way, if you keep God's command, God will bless you. Yes. That is what the Bible says. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 1 says, Love the Lord your God and keep his requirements. Keep his decrees. Keep his laws and his commands always. There is no room for negotiation here. There is no room for saying maybe I can miss. No, there is no room. God say, you keep, you obey my command. That's it. But Romans chapter 2, verse 6 to 8 says, God will repay each person according to what they have done. To those who will persist in doing good, seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking, for those who are rejecting the truth and following evil, there will be wrath and anger. Brothers and sisters, you have a choice. God is not forcing anyone to follow him. You have a choice. You can choose what your friends are doing, good for you, for me and my family, we will choose Jesus. We will go Jesus' way. Hallelujah. Amen. Revelation chapter three, 3, verse 8 says, I know all your work, and I have placed before you an open door. No one can close. You are not very strong, but you obeyed my message and did not deny you yes. are my followers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for our Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, you have a choice. But I'm asking you to not envy your friends, to not copy your friends, to not imitate your friends. Because this morning God is saying, since you have been faithful, since you have perceived, persevered, since you kept my word, I will set before you an open door that no man can shut. I pray that God reveals to you that there is a door that he already set open in front of you, but no one can shut. The devil can turn around, but he, he is powerless. He cannot shut that door. Hallelujah. He cannot shut that door. I know what you're going through. God knows what you're going through. God is aware of your attempts. God is aware of your failures. God sees your discouragement. But God is saying this morning, simply stand still. 
God did not say, the door is just right there. He said, before you. That means keep going. Brothers and sisters, keep going. You're doing good. Keep going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The door is open, and no man can shut that door. And no demon can shut that door as well. No authority can shut that door. Hallelujah. We live in a world where authority, sometimes because of the majority, they, took, they take some stupid decisions. They take some bad decisions. But let me tell you, this door, this door I'm talking about, they have no power over it. Over it. Hallelujah. Even yourself, not only you, can, you cannot shut that door, but let me tell you, you cannot open that door too. It's God and God alone who has the power to open it. Hallelujah. I know you have opened many doors. Some of those were promising, but after a year, ah, it was not the right thing to do. And then you turn back again and you try something. But when you pray God and say, God, you have promised to open a door. Would you open that door now so that I don't go left and don't go right and, and waste my time? Hallelujah. That is my prayer this morning. Amen. That is my prayer that God open that door, reveal that door to you, so there is no time wasted. Hallelujah. Amen. No one can open that door. Even yourself can, cannot open that door. And no one can close that door. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are in a good place. Amen. We just have to pay attention. I'm not a preacher who makes a lot of noise, who runs from left to right. Maybe it will come one day. I like small things, small principles. Hallelujah. Thank you. Because before you run, learn how to walk. It's one step and then another step and then another step. If you're faithful with little, God will give you more. Amen. Good for those who will come when they will preach. I don't know. Things are following on you. Hallelujah. If they fall on me, I will grab them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But I will teach you how to walk. Yes. And then tomorrow, we will run. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how we win. Yes. Step by step by step. Amen. Some of us have diplomas. They have accumulated diplomas. They are very educated, but no job or no dream job. When you're done, you have one diploma, you cannot get your dream job. You try again something else, and still no dream job. Some of us have invested a lot of money. They have taken excellent financial decisions. Ah. No result. I mean, they are barely making it. You here, and you know I'm, what I'm saying is true. I can assure you one and one thing, and this is what we're singing this morning. The God we pray is the guy who makes the way. Amen. If your diploma did not give you or open a way. Do not worry about that. Your diploma gives you a general education and allow you to do something. Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle is an engineer. I'm an engineer too. But we're not working in our domain. I'm doing totally something completely different that actually I hate it. I did not like at all. I give you the testimony when my wife said, okay, you should apply and then go work there because you're smart. I said, I agree. I am smart. I agree. <laughs> but I don't want to work there because I'm technical and this is accounting. I'm not an accountant. I don't like numbers. I really hate accounting. <laughs> but the door that God opens no one can shut it. Yes. So I open the door, and then it's like someone is pushing you. 
I find myself in, and then I'm walking in. I'm walking in. I'm going, and no one can stop me. Brothers and sisters, this is true. Do not worry if you have accumulated diplomas. It gives you, it opens your mind to be able to do multiple things. And let God open that door. What you're calling your dream job is probably not a dream job. Tomorrow, you may change your mind. Hallelujah. God will give you another dream. And hallelujah. What God does, it's just unbelievable. The Bible says no one can redo what God does. And no one can undo what God has done. It is impossible. It is impossible. If you take a diamond, you see how it, it looks very good. Amen? Where it's coming from? It's deep there. It does not look like the, 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 whatever is looking today. It's something, I mean, you may even pass by. Someone has to tell you, actually, this is diamond. You wouldn't know. Think about the process to go back from what we have and actually make a diamond. It's impossible. Things that God has done, no one can do them. No one can redo them. It is impossible. You as well. You, I'm asking you today to stop comparing you to another person because God loved you. God spent some time making you. Hallelujah. The brother who is behind you is taller. He has muscles and everything. There is a purpose for that. God does not give you something just like this. Amen? There is a purpose for that. So don't envy your brother. He's going to go through stuff where he's going to use our muscles. Hallelujah. Maybe focus on what God has done for you. Amen? If God can open spiritual eyes, there will always be a president of a company. No muscles for that. You don't need that. But there will always be if you keep going down, there will be someone who will be pushing, will be lifting. God gave you muscles for that. So if you hear and envying someone because of their look, it's coming from God. But there is a purpose behind that. Hallelujah. Do what God made you for. That's it. As I was saying... In my life, and this is a testimony, God opened doors that no man could have ever opened. I know it. I did not make myself. I am not the person I am because I did something extraordinary. It is not possible. I am not alive today because actually I'm smart. I know how to jump when there is obstacles. No, 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 no. No one knows that. But I can testify that in my life, I have seen the hand of God. I have seen how God took danger away from me to allow me to move forward. Most of you know my testimony. So I can testify that in front of you, you know what I went through. And you know what God has done in my life. I can testify that God is in control. What is important for you to know God does not need any approval to bless you. There is no vote. God does not consult people saying, oh, what should I do for Kyrie? No. He is sovereign. He takes a decision. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, brothers and sisters here, do not be distracted by what you see around you, by what other people have and you don't have. Do not be distracted about that. God is just amazing, incredible. Amen. When we decided to move here from Montreal uh, a long time ago, in 2002, we, we're French. That's our first language, so we did not speak English. Yes, we knew how to write and stuff because you study English at school anyways. So we got here. 
I, I got here first, and six months later, my wife finished her, her school in Montreal, and then she came. Uh, well, my wife is a, an active person. Uh, she, she's helping with the children's ministry upstairs today. So she needs something all the time. She got here, she said, oh, uh, did you do a registration for me to go learn English? I said, yes. But you know what? I need to work. I said, okay, you cannot work here if you don't speak English. She said, okay, no problem. Let's pray for it. And then we prayed for God to bless her. And then she got a job immediately. I have seen things happening in my life that sometimes, I'm, personally, I'm scared about myself. When I got here in 1999, it was in April, uh, I, I just escaped all the, the killings. Uh, I, I just made it out. It's like, poof, you find yourself out of the country. You don't, you don't understand how. When I got here, my wife and my son were in danger. The killings were because of my tribe, my look. But my wife has, is from another tribe, and my son looked like my wife, which means they were safe. <laughs> I don't understand. But they were in danger. People were killed. This is not a joke. So when I got here, I realized that they were in danger. And I knew they were in danger. So I prayed. So the first thing I did when I got in Montreal, I was looking for a church. And then I found a, a friend. We grew up together back home. He brought me to his church. And then I started praying. But my best, my best prayers are the prayers when I'm alone. And then I prayed. I saw God. I have seen your hand in my life. I saw everything you have done. You closed in front of me the eyes of my enemies for me to have a, a safe way out, out of the country. I have seen it. I am amazed I don't understand. Yes. My wife and my son are in danger. So I am praying that in 30 days, I want them here. Brothers and sisters, some prayers, even today when I think about it, I saw you were crazy. But I know how I survived for eight months in deep persecution. I know what I did. So that's the only thing I did. If my ministry, if you want to learn anything from my ministry, that's the only thing you have to learn. When you humble yourself, when you pray, you praise God and you fast, and you are sincere in what you're doing, God will open doors for you. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, Brothers and sisters, there is nothing special I did. I went on my knees every single day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, praying, fasting, no food, nothing. Water sometimes. People were coming to my house to help me. I had friends. These are true friends. They come and they fast with you. I was locked in the house. I could not go outside. They, they would have killed me. They have tried anyways, so I knew exactly what I was talking about. But I prayed, and I saw the hand of God moving in my life. When I got in this apartment in Montreal, I remembered what God has done in my life. I remembered how far he went to look for me. And I prayed. I saw God. My family will not survive where they are. You have said in your word, knock and then I will open. Ask and they will give you. I'm asking for my family to be here in 30 calendar days. 30 days. You have heard this testimony before. In 30 calendar days, my wife and my son were in Montreal, in Canada. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Canada, safe. 
My eyes are looking at the miracle. Miracle. People who are not wise will try to imagine, so how did you do? Did you apply for this? And then you worked. 30 days. I spent eight months looking for a way out. Huh? But we prayed 30 days and God opened that door. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Dear Lord, it is with the same faith, the same level of faith, that I pray for the congregation here. And I pray that in 30 days, 30 calendar days, you will open doors that were closed. Hallelujah. 30 days, Lord, you unlock blessings that have been locked for a long time. 30 days for all the businesses to turn around. All the contracts that have been blocked, we, we unlock them. 30 days, Lord. You have, been, you have done it in the past. I have seen you doing it in the past. You will do it again. Hallelujah. 30 days for the job applications. Oh, hallelujah. Everyone who has sent a job application, expect something in 30 days. It's your faith. Let's put God to test. That's what the Bible says. Put me to test, and you will see if I will not open the doors of windows and pour out a blessing that will not be able to contain. 30 days, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, it's faith. If you have been coming to the Wednesday services, you will understand what I'm saying. It's your faith. God will give you to the level of your faith. If you believe something strongly, it will happen. It is the level of your faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't care what other people have and I don't have. That is not my problem. Hallelujah. God has something for me. And if I pray, brothers and sisters, if you're here and you feel these messages for me, hallelujah, I recommend you to pray. Praise the Lord and fast. Find a day during the week. You say, this day I'm going to fast because I'm expecting something in 30 days. If it happened with Pastor John, it will happen to me as well. We serve the same God. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing that is impossible. I have said it. God can do something that no one is able to do. No one is able to imitate. No one is able to stop. This door I'm talking about that God has opened in front of you, I'm asking God to open it right now. Amen. Right now. Hallelujah. I know this year is a special year. This year is a year that will bring a lot of things. People have been waiting for, for children for a long time. They will have their babies. This year is a special year. But within a blessing, we can have another special blessing. For me, it's 30 days. I need to see in 30 days God in action in your life, in your life, in your life, and in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why do you worry when your friends have something you don't have? Why do you worry? Hallelujah. If they have something because of themselves, good for them. If they mock you because you spend more time here than to do a third and a fourth job, good for them. That's good. Let me tell you, because people mock us, because you're a Christian, hallelujah, if I open my Facebook, I have... This pastor is saying this. Uh, I mean, I'm blessed. Yes. Amen. Amen? But so, some other people, is something totally different. I don't envy other people. Eh, I'm content with what God has given me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. People are laughing at you because it looks like your, your life has turned something bizarre and your business is not producing the way it should produce and people are mocking you. God will prepare a table in front of them. God will prepare a table in front of them. Hallelujah. They will witness the goodness of God in your life. The last word belongs to God. Hallelujah. If you're here and you're still in doubt, 
Because what you're going through is major. Hallelujah. Here is what I wrote for you. Jesus is the only reason you made it so far. Jesus is the only reason I made it so far. I know that. Jesus is the only reason your family is still together. Our church is still together. Jesus is the only reason that your business is still going on. Jesus is the only reason that you, your business is to... Listen, some people who have business... I don't know why business is coming to my mind. Some people have businesses here. You have made mistakes, terrible mistakes. Your business does not collapse. Hallelujah. Amen. The people who you were envying before, when you look at what they have been doing, oh my goodness, this, oh, yeah, yeah. did you see my, my friends? Oh, he built this, he built. Those people are not anymore. The business is not anymore. Yes, there was a peak. And now they're experiencing a peak in the other direction. But you, you're still there. You're still going. You made mistakes, but your, your business did not collapse. You're still going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of the young people who are here, I used to be young, I'm not young anymore. We did the same mistakes as every young person. Same. Growing up, we are not nice. We did the horrible things. But we finished school. They did not. They did not. We finished school, they did not. Some got incurable diseases. You did not. We can say today that the Lord has protected you. Oh, can someone say the Lord has protected me? <laughs> the Lord has protected me. The Lord has shielded me. Yeah. Just think about everything you have been doing. Every places you went. People were contaminated. You were not. I did the same mistakes as you, but I'm still going on. They, they did not. Yes, they're prospering. At some point, your eyes were on them. So, oh, you see this person? Oh, man. At least he has five kids and stuff like that. You know, you envy other people. But today... There is no family. But yours, despite all the difficulties, despite everything, yeah. you're still going strong. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. God is faithful. God has been faithful to us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Look at it seriously. You could have lost everything. Your business, your family, your life. But you're still here strong. Some people wronged you. Your wife did terrible things. Your husband did terrible things. They, you're not together anymore. And they probably think, oh, he will go down. He's going to die. I've been giving him a year. He will be homeless. You are still here. You are strong. And you're still going on. And there is plenty of life in front of you. Hallelujah, brother. God is faithful. There is no question. Hallelujah. That was my mission this morning. To remind you where we're coming from. Where are we going? Yes. We did not do it because I don't know. No, it's because of God. God has been with us from the beginning to the end. If we continue thinking that, that God is faithful, he has been faithful, and he will remain faithful, God will do awesome things in, in front of us. Amen. I'm asking you to stay focused. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're here and you believe what I've said, you can stand up as I'm closing. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask everyone, just close your eyes and picture God. Be in the presence of the Lord. Maybe you believe in God for a child. Maybe you believe in God for a business to pick up. Maybe you believe in God for your marriage to be healed. Maybe it's your health. You need a miracle. Maybe it's your finances. You need to be out of debt. Maybe it's your children. You need them to turn, to turn around. 
I'm here this morning to tell you that you can trust the fullness, the fulfillment of, of God. The Bible says God's promises are yes and amen. You may not see anything happen, happening or not yet. But I can guarantee you that God heard you. God did not ignore you. God is not running out of options. God is not wondering, what should I do for my brother? What should I do for my sister? God is not running out of options. Circumstances and facts can lead you to think it's over. My marriage, it's over. My business, it's over. It's just not possible. You may think because of circumstances that it's not going to happen. I know when trouble comes, it's easy to forget what God has done in your life in the past. It's easy to forget that. Hallelujah. Circumstances can push you to think and to forget where God took you from. God this morning is saying in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Brothers and sisters, the message is clear in my heart and in my mind. God is saying, if you keep your trust in me, I will make a way where there could not possibly be any way. Brothers and sisters, this is a time to think about something that was impossible. But God did it. God is a person who opens the door where there was no door. When the children of Israel left Egypt running, there was absolutely no door and no way. But there was God. That is the only thing you need. God opened the door where there was no door. That door, no one can shut it. I pray this morning that God, the faithful God we have seen not only for 13 years, but the faithful God we have seen our entire life, that door, that God listens to your prayer this morning and open that door. That door he promised to open. The hope is and keep the devil away from your dreams, away from your promises. That door, no one will be able to shut it. Hallelujah. Let's give a clap offering to our Lord Jesus this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. We thank you for everything, Lord. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do for the next 30 days. We thank you in advance, Lord. We declare this morning, you have done it. You have done it already, Lord. We are praying this morning that you bring it forth now. Bring it forth in the life of my brother. Bring it forth in the life of my sister. Bring it forth, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, Lord, I pray for businesses. I pray for businesses. I pray for financial situations, Lord. I pray and I believe many will be debt free in this church hallelujah as you put it on my heart i pray that you unlock all the blessings lord hallelujah let the entire town witness what my brother and my sister have done in their businesses hallelujah let the magazine talk about them this is these are miracles lord that everyone should hear about hallelujah you're going to do great things, Lord. Lord, I pray for families. I pray 
for marriages. I pray for our kids, Lord. It's only you and you who can keep people together. It's only you and you who can make kids to obey their parents. It's only you and you. It's only your presence, Lord, that can actually change people, actually touch people and, and transform them, Lord. You and you, Lord. So I pray that you invade our life, invade our houses, impose yourself in our houses, Lord, and touch my brother, touch my sister. Hallelujah. Cause us, Lord, to live right. Cause us, Lord, to turn our back to everything we're doing that actually does not honor you, does not confess your name as your Lord, our Lord and our Savior. Cause us to live your ways and not our ways. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Bow down and enter in, enter in, oh, enter in, bow down, bow down and worship.